My name is Daryl Root, and this is Cisco Training. Our goal for these series of podcasts is to teach you how to run a network of Cisco routers and switches. This series of podcasts is designed to be a hands-on exercise. In order to successfully learn, you're going to need to get some routers. Today's podcast is going to talk about exactly what kind of routers to get, how to get them, and how to get consoles so you can manage those routers. This is the kind of network we'd like to build. Here we have three routers. Each router has two physical serial interfaces plus a loopback interface. The loopback interface is a logical interface on the router. You won't physically see the interface. However, the serial interfaces are physical interfaces. Your routers either have them or they don't. Our goal here is to build a triangle. If we can build a triangle of routers, then we can study most of the routing protocols that we need to learn. We can build the triangle of serial interfaces or fast Ethernet interfaces. This is a Cisco 2514 router. It's a pretty old router, and as a result, they're pretty cheap to buy on eBay secondhand. On the left-hand side are two interfaces called AUI interfaces. Those are actually 10 megabit Ethernet interfaces. In the middle, we have two synchronous serial interfaces. Those are DB60 connectors, 60 pins per serial interface. Slightly to the right of those serial connectors is a console port and an auxiliary port. The console port is what you'll plug a serial connector into in order to get console. And then off to the right we have the power switch and the power cord. The Ethernet interfaces you saw are probably not like Ethernet interfaces that you're used to. You're used to Ethernet interfaces like the back of your Macintosh, which have a, a small cable, what's known as an RJ45 connector with eight pins. The interfaces on the, on the 2514 router were AUI interfaces, which was a very old Ethernet standard. In order to connect with a normal Ethernet cable, you're going to need to uh, use what's called a transceiver, an Ethernet uh, uh, 10 megabit to AUI transceiver. This is a somewhat blurry picture of a transceiver. This looks like the Ethernet cable that you're used to. At each end it has an RJ45 connector with 8 pins. This particular cable is actually a crossover cable. It has the pins reversed so that way you can plug a router directly to another router. This is the pinout diagram for that Ethernet crossover cable. As you can see, wires 1 and 2 on one end go to wires 3 and 6 on the other end. And wires 3 and 6 on the first end go to wires 1 and 2 on the second end. That way the transmit on one end is wired to the receive on the other, and the receive on one end is wired to the transmit on another. Here's another 2500 series router commonly able to be purchased on eBay. On the left hand side we have 16 asynchronous serial connections. Those are low speed serial connections. We typically, we're not going to use them in this uh, series of classes. Next to them we have one AUI port which uh, can plug, using a transceiver, you can plug it into an Ethernet cable. Then we have two synchronous serial connections. Those are the DB60 connectors and then we have our console and auxiliary port. Here's a closer look at that 2511. These uh, 2511s were used to be used for modem servers. So you'd hung, hook 16 modems into the asynchronous serial ports. Another way they were commonly used is as console servers. You'd hook those 16 ports with what are called octopus cables into 16 consoles on 16 other more important routers. But we're not going to use it for any of that. Over to the right, look, you can see the synchronous serial interfaces labeled Serial 0 and Serial 1. Those are the DB60 connectors. Those are actually 60-pin connectors. There are, there are four rows of pins, 15 pins each. This is an unusual cable used only in training labs. It's one foot long. It has a DB60 connector on each end. One side is called DTE, Data Terminal Equipment. The other side is called DCE, Data Communications Equipment. Normally, when you're connecting a serial port, the DTE side will go on the router in your facility, and the DCE side will connect to the telecom equipment carrier's uh, gear. Of course, we're training in a lab. We don't have a telecom carrier. Instead, we're connecting our routers directly to each other. And one of the tricks is that one end has to be treated as if it were the communication equipment. 
this is a very convenient cable to use in the lab environment because it's nice and short and has both the DCE and DTE ends in one cable but it was never really used in production so you probably won't be able to buy many of them on eBay you'll probably need to this is a Cisco 3524 XL switch it's a layer 2 switch it has 24 fast Ethernet ports and two gigabit ports on the right hand side the gigabit ports need what are called GBICs, little insertable optical modules in order to work. For the first few podcasts, we're only going to be working with routers. We're not going to be working with switches. Later on, we will be working with switches, but for now, you know, just buy some routers. But if you can get a package deal and you can get some routers and some switches, it'd be nice to pick up some switches like this, 3524 or better yet, a 3550 or 3560. This is the back of the 3524. On the left-hand side is your regular power connector. In the middle, there's a sort of weird white 16-pin thing, which is actually a DC power input. Uh, we won't be using that. That's uh, used with a special redundant power supply module that uh, Cisco sells. On the right-hand side is the console port. This is a Keyspan USB to serial adapter. If You're going to need this in order to manage your Cisco routers. Most modern computers only have USB ports. Your USB port plugs into the serial adapter, and then from your serial adapter you can use a, a, ro a rollover cable, uh, usually sold with Cisco gear, to get console on your router. So here's a summary of what you're going to need. You'll need three routers with two physical interfaces each. You'll need three cables to connect the routers in a triangle. You'll need a 9-pin DB9 serial port on your computer, if it's a PC, or if it's a Macintosh or more modern PC, which only has USB ports, you're going to need a Keyspan USA 19-HS USB serial adapter. You're also going to need a Cisco console cable. Odds are you'll get one with your routers when you, uh, when you buy them on eBay. The console cable is included in what's called the router accessory kit. For the three legs of your triangle, you're going to need the right kind of cables. With my older 2500 series routers, I was using synchronous serial cables. You'll need DCE to DTE DB60 crossover cables. I recommend one foot one, a very short one, like one foot to uh, make it easy to, you know, so you don't make a big mess on your desk. A Google search for that will find it. I found places that were selling them for like six bucks each. If you're using Ethernet, then you're going to need Ethernet crossover cables, and you might also need AUI to Ethernet transceivers. Again, a Google search on that will, uh, the first hit, it'll show at the top the products that are for sale. I did a Google search on Cisco 2501 router and found a bunch of hits. The prices are reasonably good. You can build your tri you can get three routers and build your triangle with well less than a thousand dollars. One of the things that you need to look out for is the amount of memory in the router. The maximum amount of memory you can put in a 2500 router is 16 megs of RAM and then 16 megs of flash. The RAM is where you the memory that you're running, you know, when it's operating. The flash is where your operating system is stored. Now, some of the older 2500s have only 8 megs of DRAM and 8 megs of flash. That'll run, but if you have a choice, get the routers with the 16 megs of DRAM and 16 megs of flash. That'll let you run operating system images with uh, more recent operating system images with more features. One of the nice things about eBay is that lots of people have already gone through the exercise of building up a lab, getting all the cables uh, so that they can study for their Cisco certifications. They pass their certifications, they got jobs as network engineers, they're done, they don't need the lab anymore. And so they're selling the whole lab in one big shop. For under $1,000, you can very easily get a lab with all the cables, the three routers you need. This picture shows a lab which has only two routers, but it also has two older Catalyst 1900 switches. Those switches aren't great, but you know, it's, uh, you know, for less than 1000 bucks, it's not that bad of a deal. And the best thing about this is, if you're not too familiar with Cisco gear, you're not completely confident what kind of cables to get, by searching around eBay, you can typically find uh, you know, a, a, a lab setup where they have everything that you need. The trick is, 
for this la- for for this series of podcasts, make sure that you get three routers that you can set up in a triangle. Once you have your routers, you're going to need to get console on your router. You're going to need to use your KeySpan uh, USB to serial adapter. You'll need to download and install the drivers from uh, from KeySpan in order to get the the the, uh, the adapter to work on your Macintosh. You'll need to use your console cable that hopefully came with your accessory kit for one of your routers, so that way you can have an RJ45 plug, plug it into the console port on your router. The key span lets your computer physically talk to the console of the router, but you're also going to need a, uh, a software program to talk to the router. Uh, on Macintoshes, I recommend Zterm. A uh, Google search on Zterm will find it, or you can see the URL here and uh, you can install that software and it will let you get console on your router. Here are the connection settings in order to get Zterm to work with your Cisco router. You'll need to set your data rate of 9600 baud, 8 data bits, 1 stop bit. This is what success looks like. Your Zterm is uh, uh, connected to your router, your router is booting up, you can see that you're running uh, Cisco Internet Work Operating System software. That concludes today's lesson. Once you're here, you're ready to execute password recovery, and we'll cover that in our next lesson.